Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a first-hand look at Outback Finance. It's another auto staking, auto compounding protocol or ASP for short, um, that is getting ready to launch soon. They just had their whitelist pre-sale and they're going to have a public pre-sale tomorrow. Um, so wanted to be able to talk about Outback Finance today. Of course, what we're going to do is go over the documentation section to figure out what they're talking about, go over this medium post where they talk a little bit about this public pre-sale here and give them an overall rundown on Outback Finance. Uh, but before we do, of course, please subscribe to the YouTube channel here. If you are new, definitely welcome to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. If you would like to continue to see videos like today pertaining to new crypto and DeFi uh, projects, protocols, whatever you want to call them, uh, then definitely consider subscribing if you find any value in today's video. Uh, also, if you subscribe, you're definitely going to want to hit the notification bell because this is the best way to stay up to date or really one of the best ways to stay up to date with uh, all of the content that I post here on the YouTube channel. Uh, as we all know that things in crypto and DeFi are extremely time sensitive. So if you want to be notified as soon as I release new content, that is the best way to go ahead and do so. Also, there's going to be the first link in the description to the premium Discord server. This is where we do all of our whitelist spot giveaways. We do NFT giveaways um, and you get access to these videos or the projects I make videos about uh, before they get uploaded here to the channel. So you can click that link, view the laundry list. There's, there's a ton of other stuff. I won't go into everything, but <clears throat> like I said, you can click that first link and view all the benefits that you can take advantage of when signing up, right? So Outback Finance here, the site is pretty minimal, um, but we are going to check out their documentation section immediately. So as you can see is what is Outback Finance. So it is auto staking protocol that is engineered to provide easier staking instead of staking on a DAP. Outback Finance allows users to receive a rebase on their tokens directly to their wallet. The APY for Outback Finance is set at a permanent 300,000% uh, per year. Uh, and that is APY, not APR. With most generic staking protocols, APY fluctuates in coordination with the amount of users that are staking. This means that in basic staking protocols, the APY can change drastically by whale movements. As we all know, with these auto staking protocols, that, that is not the case because this APY is fixed to whatever they, they set it at, right? <clears throat> all these auto staking protocols, uh, they have an... Uh, elastic supply um you know so really what makes these projects successful is what they do after launch whether that's what they're doing with their marketing uh what they're doing to provide further utility to the protocol but as we've all seen over the last couple of weeks the potential to make money in these types of plays or in these types of protocol is very high right so <clears throat> What is the goal of Outback Finance? The main priority of Outback Finance is to provide a long-term store of value for users and to return a high intrinsic value to users of the protocol through the steady APY and a large treasury. The Outback Finance team aims to bring value to our investors beyond the RU token um, through steady sustainable strategies. The Outback team aims to create value for investors in both the phantom ecosystem and the DeFi space as a whole. Uh, if I did not mention that already, this is the, a project that is, of course, like we just read, launching on the phantom ecosystem, which is good to see because a lot of these auto staking protocols have been launching on uh, BSC or AVAX, um, obviously Matic as well. Um, so, and, and for me, I love phantom. Uh, so it's good to see more protocols launching on phantom. I think that does overall, it does a lot for the Phantom ecosystem. So I'm happy to see that. Um, also, just looking through their actual Discord here, they've got about 15,800 members in the actual Discord. Uh, so lots of people, the chat is very, very active. So definitely, definitely pretty interesting. They did have 550 people whitelisted for that whitelist presale in which we will go into a little bit more depth on what that looked like. And that way you can get a good understanding of, I mean, how I typically look at this is if there's a lot, a lot of people in the white sale 
or sorry, in the whitelist presale, then you know that could potentially impact the price action. You know, once this thing launches, um, as of recently, we've seen a lot of these kinds of protocols launch, launch on pink sale, um, and they would essentially they would have a soft cap, which once they hit that soft cap, um, it would just continue to go on, and people could just jump into the essential like presale, and and but really it's like how they would fair launch things, um, and they would leave this running for an extended period of time. And typically what we see happening is, is if there's a lot of investors pre-sale uh, or jumping into a pink sale that is open up to the public, then typically, since there's a lot of holders already and there's going to be a lot of tokens out there, once it launches on the on the market, then typically we see uh, that kind of play out in the price action where you have a lot of people that that claim their, their tokens for pink sale. Again, Outback Finance is not doing this on pink sale. But they claim their tokens, and then um, you know that could potentially negatively impact the price action uh, right after launch, which uh, which we've seen quite a few times, right? So Outback Finance is run by a front end developer, back end developer, smart contract developer, community manager, and a marketing specialist. So five people there. The team has extensive knowledge in the DeFi space. In addition to that. The team has all worked on a previous project. With that being said, the team has seen what has been successful in the space and what has not been successful. Through our vast experience, the Outback team is strong enough to create the biggest protocol around. So they have some information on how it works. Um, obviously, we kind of know a little bit about that works, but let's check out this lottery system. Uh, any rebase token, or says with any rebase token, there's potential for the token to become overinflated. Following basic economic principles, when the circulating supply rises while the market cap stays stagnant, the price per token decreases, right? So this is an inflation issue. This is a major pitfall of other rebase tokens. To combat this, the team is introducing a variety of burn mechanisms, which is great. The more, the more deflationary mechanics a protocol has, um, especially with an elastic supply like this, it's overall good for the longevity and sustainability of the protocol, right? So it says the most beneficial burn mechanism will be via a lottery. The lottery allows users to buy one ticket by sending one RU token to the contract. The lottery will draw once every three days with the following ratio. So 90% of the RU goes to the winner, 8% is then burnt, and 2% goes back into the bank, right? So it's very interesting how they choose to implement this lottery system. Kind of reminds me a little bit of what Titano is doing with Titano Play. Obviously, that's a little bit different, but still, uh, again, another you know deflationary strategies or, or utility is good to see coming out of these types of protocol, right? <clears throat> so with any rebasing token, our biggest concern is the market cap being stagnant. Um, again, if the market cap is stagnant, then this typically means that um, well, a couple things, right? The the amount of tokens circulating is gradually increasing, like they're saying here, but also you, they they could potentially have be having less volume, right? And as we know, with these types of protocols, they thrive off buy sell tax to overall aid in the uh, the growth and um, sustainability of the protocol, right? So the taxes will be beneficial to the growth of both the treasury and the protocol. In short, the taxes benefit the long-term holders of RU token that believe in the protocol. So they have their tre treasury here. The treasury is one of the most important aspects of bringing value into or to the users in the protocol. Building a deep treasury allows users to benefit from other means besides the RU token. So the treasury will be established via the pre-sale. From there, the growth of the treasury will come from the taxation of the RU token. The treasury is split up as follows. So 20% to high risk adverse assets, 50% to stable coin staking and yield farming, and 30% to cross chain yield farming and angel investments. All right, so this is what they're going to be doing to increase the overall size of their treasury, um, which is good. Uh, right, we always want to see protocols doing this type of stuff rather than just laying, you know, or, or allowing 
the tokens to sit in the in the treasury and not be occurring any kind of yield on them. So this is good. Um, with basic staking alone, the treasury can go by 20%. By the calculations done by the team, even most minimal investments can lead to a minimum of a 400% gain in the current market conditions. Uh, they have dynamic taxes, which is inspired by Sphere Finance. The Outback team has decided to implement dynamic taxes. This will have a positive effect for the average holder of the Rue token. So normal tap taxes typically can harm an average investor in comparison to a whale in the protocol. With dynamic taxes, all investors will be will not be harmed via the taxes. So dynamic taxes can best be explained by the Sphere team. Full credit goes to them for this brilliance. And here is how that works, right? So dynamic taxes are an innovative concept created by the Sphere team which aim to minimize price manipulation by taxing sales slash wallet transfers additionally based on how big of a shareholder uh, essentially they are, right, in correlation to the liquidity pool of Sphere, or in this case of the Rue token. Uh, this means that somebody with a lot of tokens in the ecosystem cannot dump the market without leaving a share of it in the hands of the community, making future attempts harder and harder. How many Sphere tokens you hold is taken into account when calculating how big of a share the LP you hold. For every 1% that you hold, the tax is increased 5% until there's a total sale tax of 70%, right? So this is this is pretty crazy, and this is kind of like a, a big, kind of like an anti-whale mechanism. Uh, well, getting, get, like putting that power into the wrong hands, right? So simple calculation, um, 1% equals 5% tax, 2% equals 10% tax, 3% of the LP equals 15% tax, and so on, increasing 5% uh, on the tax side as it equates to uh, whatever percentage of the LP that that whale could potentially own, right? So this tax does not affect the ordinary buyer because the sheer volume of the LP would need to have um, to make such a share possible. So that is a breakdown of their taxes um, on the the um, dynamics tax side of things when we talk about buy sell taxes we're looking at a 13 percent buy tax transfer tax uh, so meaning there's 13 percent tax every time you buy a token which we'll get into how that's split up but also if you were to buy a token and then transfer that to another wallet you're then also going to be taxed at another 13 percent. so just keep that in mind this is very important to know uh, on sell tax there is 20 percent and as follows, you can see what the taxes are going to be actually used for. So the sell tax breakdown of that 20%, so 5% to the treasury, 10% goes to marketing, 10% to the liquidity pool. Um, on the buy tax breakdown and the transfer tax, you're looking at 4% to the treasury, 4% to marketing, and 5% to the LP. Taxes of the treasury will contribute in a large part to burns of the token, right? So the larger the treasury is, the more tokens that they can burn and overall decrease the circulating supply, right? So here's some information around the, the actual launch itself. This has already happened. So 50 or 50 million tokens will be available for users to buy via the whitelist presale at the price of 0.1 or one cent per route. And then the public presale, 35 million tokens will be available for users to buy via the public presale at the starting price of 0 0.015 per rue. They have their team allocation, their treasury, and the starting amount as well. The initial liquidity will be set at a minimum of 600,000 with rue at the initial starting price of 0.25 per, or sorry, 0 0.25 um, dollars. I'm sorry, cents. <laughs> uh, so two cents, just a little, a little over two cents, right? Um, so they have their whitelist presale, their public presale uh, or whitelist presale has already been done. So that is a box checked off. Their public presale will function as the primary mechanism for growing the treasury right off the bat. The public presale will have a max deposit of 5,000 and we will aim to, to raise 525,000 for the treasury um, at that, at that presale or the public presale price, right? Um, obviously, I have some security stuff here as well. Security is an emphasis to Outback Finance. The team is half docs. The team will complete a full KYC process before the launch. We will also be utilizing a multi-sig for all of our contracts. And here you can see that 
they have actually gone ahead and KYC'd with Ape O'Clock, so you don't have to worry about waiting for that anymore. Um, they've already taken care of it, which is great to see. Uh, then they give you some more information on how to onboard into the Phantom ecosystem. If you're not familiar, it's super easy. You're just going to want to make sure that you add the RPCs to your MetaMask, add the Phantom network to your MetaMask, uh, and then you can bridge over via SpookySwap. And they leave all the links to that down below, or not down below, but uh, in their actual documentation, right? Uh, if we read through this pre-sale, they, they did have this Medium post, much of which we've we've kind of already covered um, since we're we're past the um, the whitelist pre-sale, but that did occur on the 8th of April at 1700 UTC. And now they're getting ready for their public pre-sale, right? Their liquidity is set to go live on April the 17th, so just in a couple of days, so you're still rather early to be able to jump into their community, read through all their documentations, make a decision if this is something that you wanted to jump into. Um, obviously, what we talk about here on the channel is not financial advice. I'm just simply showing you what I'm finding in the world of crypto and DeFi. But I think that is going to cover everything that I wanted to discuss as it pertains to Outback Finance today. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you got any value in today's video, if you could drop a like on the video, I would greatly appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will see you on the next one.